Now, if you're going to understand the Microsoft services uh, and, and work with their products, especially all their cutting edge stuff, it's important for you to have a good foundation of the way things were, the way things are now, and kind of what Microsoft's vision is for the future. And so I want to I wanna make sure you have a good solid foundation of things like Active Directory, domains, remote access, uh, virtualization, and then of course getting into the cloud stuff and how kind of, how kind of things sort of came together, okay? So uh, we'll start with this. Um, you know, you go back far enough, you go back to the 1950s, the 1960s, they had mainframes, these massive computers that uh, would take up the size of a, of a room and then eventually they became sort of the size of a refrigerator. And then as we got to the 1970s, people started making their own computers and we got to the, the late 70s and the concept of personal computing came out and then by the time we got to the 80s you actually started seeing uh, computers in businesses and so your, your, your companies out there would have uh, actual computers that your office staff could use and I'm just going to kind of draw a couple things out for you here and you know, the idea here with these computers is they would start populating the office and maybe you'd have, you know, let's say you've got a thousand computers in your business. And of course, in the early days of computers, um, like as we got into the 1980s, when, when PCs and stuff started really becoming popular, uh, we lived in what was called a peer-to-peer -peer network. Okay, peer-to-peer -peer network basically means that uh, every computer is equal. There, there is no real authority over each individual computer. In other words, if your boss walks up to you and says, hey, uh, IT person, I want you to configure five things on all 1,000 computers, you, you had to either A, sit down at all 1,000 computers and configure them one at a time, or B, you had to write a script to do it. So peer-to-peer uh, -peer networking was, is not a great way to try to achieve things centrally, right? Uh, so what happened was uh, a company called Novell, uh, they created a product called NetWare. They really changed things. They, they really pushed this whole concept of what is called client servers, uh, where you have a more powerful computer, maybe not the, you know, the, the size of a mainframe, but a more powerful computer, and your client computers interact with that server, right? Uh, well, then, of course, Microsoft eventually got into the networking world as well. They created this thing called the domain, which was very similar to what Novell was doing. Uh, and then you reach the year 2000, where things really sort of change. Microsoft comes out with a new type of domain. They start using the tr a triangle as their symbol of a domain. All right. And uh, one of the main concepts of a domain is that you have a special type of server. Okay. And the server is called a domain controller. All right. So. We'll just put DC, all right, and inside that domain controller, you have a database. I'm just going to draw this little cylinder looking thing for you guys here, all right, and this is your, your database. Now, your database is called the Active Directory Database, all right, and so your domain controller is what controls your domain. So if you really want to know, like, why are domains important, all right? My answer to you is one word, and that is centralization. A lot of people think security. Yes, yeah, security is important, definitely, but centralization is why domains are so important, okay? Uh, because they allow us to control all of our stuff, our clients, our servers, all of that stuff centrally, right? Uh, we can manage it all in one place instead of having to sit down at each individual machine and make changes, right? That's the idea, okay? Now, of course, you're going to want to have usually more than one domain controller, and uh, the reason why you don't want to have more than one domain controller is the same reason you want to have more than one of anything, really. More than one of any server, especially, and that is fault tolerance and load balancing. Okay, fault tolerance meaning redundancy. If one fails, you've got another. Okay, and load balancing, uh, you don't want all of your machines having to interact with only one server. I always use the analogy, it's like going to the grocery store and getting a cartload of groceries and you know, going to check out, and then you get to the checkout line, it turns out there's only one cash register, one cashier open, uh, and so and there's like 15 people waiting in line to check out, right? Uh, well, first off, if that cash register breaks down, that's the only one they've got, well, nobody's going to get to check out, right? Uh, secondly, you got a, a, a performance problem, right? It's going to take forever to get out of that store. Uh, so what you want to see is a bunch of cash registers open, right? When you go to check out at a grocery store and 
Uh, that way you can kind of load balance, right? Some people can go to one line, some people can go to another, so on and so forth. So we can do that if we've got multiple servers, okay? Uh, so these, these domain controllers uh, also have these things called GPOs, group policy objects which help us control everything. So instead of having to sit down at one at a time and make changes to a machine, uh, I can create this thing called a GPO. The GPO can deploy the settings out to the machines. Okay, now something else that's interesting about Active Directory. Active Directory being the directory services database and all that that, it, that you use. It uses a protocol called LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, which is basically like the language that your directory services speak, user accounts, groups, all that stuff. Passwords are all kept in there, and it also uses a protocol called Kerberos for its security. Now, domain controllers replicate. So whatever you do to one Active Directory database, it actually does it to the other. For example, if I create a little uh, user account, we'll say that this little smiley face guy that I'm making here, he is going to represent a user account, all right? If we make this, this user account, we create the user account on the first domain controller here, that's actually going to replicate to the other domain controller and any of the other domain controllers that are in the Active Directory domain. So what I'm basically saying here is that these domain controllers replicate with each other. So when you, when you change one database, it's going to replicate over to the other. So they stay in sync. Okay. Now, another important component of a Microsoft domain is your domain must have a name, okay? And the name that it uses is a DNS name, domain name system, also known as domain name space, also known as domain name service, okay? Uh, and this is because we human beings don't really like to identify devices by numbers. Uh, we don't really like having to memorize lots of numbers, right? We prefer to use names when we identify things. So DNS is the service that does that, okay? All your computers and services and all that, they have IP addresses that they use, which are numbers, but we like to associate things with words and names. So your domain will be called, will have a name. Like, for example, if my, if my uh, domain is called examlabpractice.com, that's my company name, uh, a lot of times your domain name will be the same as your web presence, okay? So the other problem with that, though, is if you're going to, you know, if your domain's going to have a DNS name, you've got to have a DNS service that's going to manage all that. So we actually have to have a, a server called a DNS server. Now, granted, uh, your domain controller can actually play this role, but I'm going to draw it separately here. And inside that DNS database, inside that DNS server, we have what is called a DNS database. So I'm going to draw another one of these little cylinder looking things here. And the other thing that's interesting about that is that the database will be named after your domain. So if your domain's name is examlabpractice.com, your database is going to be called examlabpractice.com. That database is called a zone database, also known as a name database or namespace database. And what will happen is all of your computers, as they come online, they will automatically register their names inside that database, their names and their IP addresses. So now when the computers want to find each other, they can actually query uh, that DNS server to find each other. So when these computers boot up, they have to authenticate to, the, to one of these domain controllers using Kerberos. They're going to do LDAP-based queries to do that. But they're going to first actually query DNS and say, hey, DNS, do you know who my domain controller is? And since those domain controllers have uh, actually registered DNS, he'll reply back. And then DNS, and then the client can go and get authenticated, okay? And you you are officially authenticated. And then when a client wants to communicate with the file server, they'll actually query the for the file server through DNS as well, okay? Um, so that is your your basic back and forth that is happening to make all of this uh, work. Now we also have uh, an internet connection to think about. So let's draw this little cloud symbol here, and. We'll just kind of clean it up here. There we go. So our little cloud here is going to represent the internet coming in. All right. And let me just label that internet. Of course, you don't want your internal uh, network to be, you know, completely unprotected. So you probably want to have a firewall, right? Firewall router type combination. So we'll say FW for firewall. We'll put a little box around it that's going to be our firewall and that's going to help police traffic 
uh, coming going out to the internet and things coming in from the internet. All right, and we'll talk more about you know things coming in here in a minute in the next foundation video. But hopefully this gives you now a good understanding of just the basics of you know what is a domain, why is it important, its centralization purposes. You can deploy GPOs, group policy objects, which throw restrictions out there on people's machines and all that. And hopefully that gives you a, a nice little solid foundation of just what a domain and active directory is. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video. And I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel. So I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that will help you pass your exam. Alright, thanks a lot for watching the video and I hope to see you again.